we've looked at using CV voltages to modulate things in our rack. Um, but let's get to the more interesting things of how do we actually set pitch out from it. So let's wire up another output. In this case, CB3, I'll wire to the pitch on Planck. So we know that we can just send voltages out and we know that pitch and Eurorack is one volt per octave. So we can use what we've learned so far and set CB3 to, let's say two volts. And here that it changed its pitch, three volt. Maybe we can set it down to zero. So that lets us do some very simple voltage math. And we know that 12 semitones in an octave, so we could start creating elaborate calculations. So let's say, uh, we want to go an octave up, so 12 plus, and then we want, so if we go C, C sharp, so we're going to need voltages divided by, oh, we're going to have to switch to the VV command, right? So we know we want to start at one octave up. And with VV, 100 is one volt. And then we're gonna have to divide, oh, 100 by 12 to get each of the seven jump steps. And so we can try this now. It, it sort of works, but you can see that the math gets pretty hairy, and that actually assumes that things are perfectly divided. Um, but the reality is that if you know anything about music theory, we have two different ways of dividing this, just intonation and equal temperament. And those move us a little subtly away from just the pure math of this. Um, the much easier way to deal with this is to use another lookup table. And the one we're going to use is simply called N. So just like we use V to look into the voltage table or VV, we can use N to look into an equal temperament note number table. So let's try to set it to 24, which should be a C, two octaves up from the bottom. Want to go one note up, a semitone up. And you can kind of hear that that actually works. Set the decay up a little bit, just to make it a little bit more <laughs> easy to hear. So we can go a full to off by jumping to. And now we can suddenly send out outputs that are um, corresponding to actual notes. Um, there is different ways in which we might want to use this in the future using another way to look into these tables, but we'll look at that separately. Uh, but that's a way to look at individual scales and then map those onto the N, uh, N lookup table. So you might want to do, let's say, a D minor and get the third um, position in that scale. But as I said, that'll be for another video. One last thing I wanted to show in this video is, remember we talked about SLU for the individual outputs? Let's see what happened with the plunk if I change the SLU here. So, set the SLU 3 to 5000. And now let's try to change the notes again. I 
And now we see the the slew being in place to slowly glide it. The one thing you will notice here is the slew doesn't take into account any of the note steps. It goes completely smoothly. So if we set a really long slew time, say 15,000 on this one, and we do a long change here, or maybe we do a subtle change. You can hear the pitch is moving slowly, but what you'll notice if, if this is on top of anything else is that these individual pitch intervals are not actually intervals in the Western, Western music scales. So they're gonna be very dissonant. Um, just something to be aware of when it comes to slew and pitches. Before I forget it, let's set the slew back to zero, to zero for output number three. And now we should once again be able to jump between them. So I want to add just one last little thing here, and I don't want to get too far into it, but now we kind of know enough that we could do something that generated something kind of like a melody. So let's jump into edit mode, and let's go look at script two that sends out the little pulse that activates the clock. What would happen if we set our uh, our pitch here as well. Um, CB3, and we'll use the end lookup. We'll set it to just 12 for now. So now it's setting its pitch every single time it's being run as well. We change the script. You can see that it's working. So let's. Uh, Let's introduce another operator that we'll go way more into depth with in the future, but just for fun now, let's introduce random. And we'll give random a save between zero and 24. Now it's setting a random value for every note every single time it's hitting, but it's pulling it out of the table of actual Western scale notes. So it is starting to sound a little bit like music, even though it might be all crazy music. That's about it for now. You're starting to have all the tools you need to do something interesting uh, with the teletype. Hoping this is useful. If there are specific things you'd like me to dive into or something you want me to go deeper into, just leave a comment as usual. Thanks for watching.